very well. You can see them better. And this is uh, Jocelyn, Serena, and Allison. We appreciate having some extra help, and this is what you call mentoring. <laughs>
And I saw a scroll sitting on the right hand of the one sitting on the throne. The scroll had writing on both sides. It was sealed with the seven seals. And then I saw a mighty angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to break the seals and open the scroll? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look into it. I cried and I cried. That's because no one was found who was worthy <coughs> to open the scroll or look inside. Alors, comme un des anciens m'a dit, ne pleure pas, car le lion de la tribu de Juda, le rejeton de la lignée de David, ouvrir le livre et ses sept sceaux. Alors je vis au milieu du trône et des quatre êtres vivants et au milieu des vieillards, un agneau qui se tenait debout. Il semblait avoir été égorgé. He went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who sat on the throne. When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell before the Lamb, each holding a harp. And holding golden bowls full of incense, he stared at the prayers of God. Here is the song that they sang. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slaughtered, and by your blood you ransomed for God's saints. From every tribe and language and people and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom. You have made them priests to serve our God. They will rule on the earth. And I looked and I heard the voice of many angels surrounding the throne and the living creatures and the elders. And they numbered myriads and myriads and thousands of thousands. In a loud voice, they were saying, The Lamb who was put to death is worthy. He is worthy to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength. He is worthy to receive honor and glory and praise. All creatures in heaven, on the earth, under the earth, and on the sea were speaking. The whole creation was speaking. I heard them all say, Praise and honor. And to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. 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 Amen.
to camp for me and others. Thank you. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for the privilege of being able to come into your house this morning. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the freedom of our nation. We thank you for the birthday party yesterday celebrating 150 years. We thank you, Lord, that it went uh, uneventful as far as, as anything going wrong. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you for that. That you, your hand is over us and you keep us safe. We thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, this morning that Laurel Ann is back in our service. We thank you that uh, George and Eloise are back in this morning again. We pray. We thank you, Lord, for, for looking after them and bringing them through the challenges that they've been through. So, Lord, also this morning we just pray for our brother Tom as he, <coughs> excuse me, as he comes forward to bring the message, Lord, that you've laid upon his heart. And that you would strengthen and encourage, and that you would be with each one of us. In Christ's name, amen. Uh, as you see in your, in your bulletin, there's a, a letter of thanks that came from Tom and Emily. And the reason that was put in there was because it, uh, it just, we need to know as a church what we are doing and who is doing it for us. And that uh, Tom and Emily had gone out on a mission trip and as, excuse me, as mentioned in there, the other members of our church. So we as a family need to know what we are doing, what we have done, so we can appreciate what God is doing for us here and what He's doing for, through our church to other places. I kind of caught Tom by surprise and said I just noticed that wasn't, he didn't know that was going to be in the world this morning. So I take a, the blame for it anyway, or the responsibility. Anyway. Let us talk. Glad to have Tom Mason, a local boy here, who's uh, coming to fill in for us this morning, and we really appreciate the help that he's offered here. And we know God has a blessing to look for. Well, I've been blessed already this morning. Uh, these children uh, singing uh, are great. And, uh, I said, uh, I said to Gary, I said, that's pretty heavy stuff. But it's also heavenly stuff. Song, thank you for that. And the young man who came up was going to the kitchen. He's going to do a lot for Baptist Fellowship, I'm sure. That's what we all we like to eat, right? So we pray for him, not just in that area, but of course uh, that uh, God will use him in a great and a great and a great way. I want to thank uh, the church, as I said, the letters there for uh, helping us uh, to go to the Dominican and great things happen there. You'll read all about that. It's always good to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. There's no doubt about it. Uh, this morning, I'll let you know that I didn't grow up in a Christian home at all. I was an introvert. You talk about an extrovert? I was an extra, extra introvert. And so when Jesus saved me at the age of 27, he gave me a message. And I haven't been quiet since. Okay? I haven't been quiet since. We have a lot to talk about. And you have a lot to talk about also because of the fact that Christ not only has saved you, but also uh, allowed you to serve in great and mighty ways. So I'm thankful this morning. Uh, for the opportunity to be here, and I've already been blessed by the worship and the song, and uh, there's a real good spirit here this morning. And I just want to let you know that uh, I have these. When you get older, sometimes you have to have these, and they're silver, okay, because it matches my hair. And when I find out who's putting a silver paint in my hair when I'm sleeping, I pay it there and get the white more. And my wife is laughing. She probably knows who it is. Anyway, this morning, without any further ado, let's turn to John chapter 9. John chapter 9. We want to read a few verses. And this uh, message is entitled, This is Your Life. And I don't want to speak just to the head, your head this morning. I want to speak to your heart. That's what it's all about. God speaks to us through the Word. But it goes further, doesn't it? It goes from here to here. And that's what we want to see today. That's what we want the Lord Jesus Christ to do. So John chapter 9, we're just going to read a few verses here. And Larry, uh, Gary said I had three hours to preach. Is that right? Oh, I see some hands going up. No, no. Don't worry. It'll only be about a half an hour. Uh, we get a lot to say here. It's a good portion. John chapter 9, looking at verse 1. It says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man? or his parents, that he was born blind. Jesus answered, Neither hath this man sinned, nor his parents, 
but that the work of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh and no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay in the spittle. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And said unto him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seen. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that was blind, said, Is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. But he said, I am he. Therefore said they unto him, How were thine eyes open? He answered and said, A man that is called Jesus made clay, and anointed mine eyes, and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and watch. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Then said they unto him, Where is he? He said, I know not. They brought him to the Pharisees, him that aforetime was blind. And it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and I do see. Therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They say unto the blind man, again, What sayest thou of him, that he hath opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him, that he had been blind, and received his sight, until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked them, saying, Is this your son, who ye say was born blind? How then doth he now see? His parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means now he seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, let him speak for himself. These words spake his parents because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if any man he confessed that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then, came, then again called they the man that was blind, and said unto him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. Last verse. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or no, I, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, again, I want to thank you and pray for your grace, your mercy, and your love. Thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that as we look into it today, that we might see and understand and know that we have power, Lord, to indeed, Lord, live for you and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ no matter where we are. And Lord, help us now today to receive a blessing and to know we're going to shout it out that we have a God who can do everything but fail. For we ask it in Jesus' name. This is your life. Well, let's, let's look at the first point. The first point. We find here the malady. He was born blind. Next one, brother. There we go. The malady. This man was born blind. And you know what? It's a picture of every one, every one of us. We're all born blind to the things of God. Right? The natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. He cannot know them. That's just that simple. For they are spiritually discerned. The Spirit of God has to work in the heart and the life to bring the Word of God to a spiritual reality in your life. To see really what God is saying. To understand who Jesus really is. And to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that what's been done in your life, only God can do. So at that, before that, the first thing we see under the malady is the, obstruct, the obstruction. This man is born blind, and every man is born blind. You know, blind also, and we're blind to the Bible to who God is. We really are. I got one verse here that uh, I want to read. We all know it, but I just want to read it. It says here in 1 John chapter 5, verse 20, And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that is true. 
And we are in Him that is true, even His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. You can look at the stars all you want. You can look at the mountains all you want. You can see the glory of God. But without the Word of God that came down from heaven, we would not know who God really is. And God was manifest in the flesh. His name is Jesus Christ, the Savior of all mankind. So without this Word, none of us could get saved. It's a living, abiding Word of God, right? I like that. Well, obstruction. There was an obstruction. And Jesus came on the scene. It says he passed by. He came on the scene. Number two, we find the observation. Uh, who did sin? His parents or this man that he was born blind? Well, the Jews believed that you could uh, sin in the womb. So they were pointing the finger. You know, it's amazing when somebody said, when you're pointing the finger this way, you have three coming back at you. I'd like to say this. Cock that thumb. That's it. I should not be doing that. And so they were looking to throw the book, so to speak, at him. Who sinned? And sometimes we are so quick to judge. And Jesus straightened it out right quick. I like that. Jesus straightened a lot of things out. Somebody said that Jesus is right for everything that's wrong in your life. It doesn't make a bit of difference what sin it is. He died for all sin. Whatever's wrong in your life, he can make it right. Because he's God. Nothing's impossible with him. I like that. Great stuff. And so, number two, the observation. And they were wrong. So many times we're wrong. If we're not looking at it from God's point of view, we're going to come up wrong every time. We need the Holy Spirit of God to help us to understand the truth. What was the object? Well, it says here that this man didn't sin, his parents didn't sin, but that the glory of God, oh, might be manifest. And you're saying that the glory of God might be manifest in your life. Every day. I like that. Every day. We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus on the good works, right? Which God had before ordained that we should walk through them. Oh, that means every day God's got something great for me. You say, well, there's a lot of ordinary living in the Christian life. There really is. Yes, there is. But we're still living. What? Why? The Spirit of God. We're still living each and every day. They may be routine, but there's a great thing that God still has for you if you are what? faithful to what He's called you to do. Where you where you where he's put you. And so we see the object. It was for the glory of God. You know what? As a Christian, those who are blind can be blessed by your presence, by your proclamation, and by the power of God. When you go witnessing, right? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. So people need to hear the word of God. You're saved here this morning. If you're saved this morning, you're here because you've heard the word of God. And you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Without the Word of God, you can't be saved. Just that simple. So the, we find here the object that God might be glorified. What about the obligation? The obligation. Verse 5. Sorry, verse 4. Verse 4. The obligation. I like that. It tells us something great here. I'm going to read down through the verses here. Verse 4. And it says here in verse 4, I must work the works of Him that sent me. While it is day, the night comes when no man can work. I have an obligation to tell people about Christ. I love that. You know what? In Isaiah 43, 43, 10 and 12, it says, You are my witnesses. Then when you go over to Acts and you read this, you see the same thing. But ye shall, be, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me. Right? In Jerusalem, in the Samaria, in the uttermost part, uttermost parts of the earth. And so we find here the obligation. We all have an obligation to talk about Jesus and stand for him. What about the opportunity? He says, I must work the day, right? Well, it's still day. And he goes down a little further. And he says, As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As long, as a period. 33 years approximately. It's a period. We have our day, right? We have our day. We have our opportunity to make our mark. Right? A mark for the master. There are a lot of people who have made their mark. Charles H. Spurgeon, D.L. Moody, R.A. E. Torrey, J.C. Ryle, George Mueller, the man of prayer, as you know. Billy Graham. And I heard this saying in a house one time, just shortly after I got saved. A woman said this to me concerning her husband, who was a pastor. He said, yeah, he's made his mark around here. And that was my mentor, Hazel Burlock, and some of you I'm sure probably know who he is. He made his mark. 
he had his day. We're not, we're all, we're not going to be here very long, that's for sure. So these first five verses actually have to do with evangelism. No doubt about it. So we see the melody. This man was born rhyme. So number two, we see the method. It was a bit bewildering. It was a bit bewildering. How do I know? Because we have an odd conduct. Jesus, what? He picked up clay. He put spit on it. And he what, anointed this guy's eyes. How in the world can anything like that ever give sight to an eye? You know what? God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He does great things. A lot, he has a lot of mysteries. A lot of secrets of the Lord. We have sometimes we question when we don't really, when we shouldn't really question. We need to just sometimes believe in what God has done. I already talked about this morning. I heard that concerning prayer. We need to believe. And so, we see the odd conduct. Jesus made play with his, with his, with his saliva. We see the odd command in verse 7. Look at verse 7. An odd command. It really was. Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is being sent. How in the world am I going to receive sight just by being, just by washing my face or washing these out of you know, the veil of my eyes? It's never been done before. You find out in John chapter 9, it says, nobody has ever opened the eyes of the blind. Nobody. Wow. So how is this going to happen? The odd conduct, the, the odd command, you know what? It's the only cure. Obedience is the only cure. Jesus said to his disciples, if you know these things, happy are you if you do them. You don't have to be a theologian, and you don't have to be a brain surgeon. If you don't do them, what's the opposite of being happy? Yeah, being sad, being miserable. We need to be obedient to God's word. He went, right? He was sent, and he went. You know something about that? There was no power in the one that went, but there was power in the one who sent. His name is Jesus. All power is given to me in heaven and earth. I mean, uh, all power. All power. I like that. And so we find here, the malady, he was born blind. Number two, the method. It was a bit bewildering for a lot of people. What is this guy going to do? What is this man, this sinner, this one who's called Jesus? Of course, others had a different view of him. And so, obedience definitely brings a blessing. Number three, the miracle. The miracle, a blessing from above. And this is where we get into trouble. Because this blessing brought much debate. Much debate. I'm going to tell you, when you get saved, people start asking some questions. Not the same person I know. Well, I lived 27 years for the devil. I got saved about 3 o'clock in the middle of the night up in my room with nowhere in New Brunswick. That's Blastville, if you want to know. <laughs> Blastville. And uh, Center Blastville. I bowed my knee to Jesus Christ. I got saved that night. And the next morning, my dad, who was not a Christian, did not know his son anymore. That's that much of a change. Glory to God, of course. Nothing to do with me. But people started asking questions. My, my father was thinking, yeah, give him three days, three weeks, and he'll be okay. He just got hit in the head. He'll come around after a while. No, it didn't happen. And so God got to work in my life and my heart. And so we find here, that this blessing from above brought a great debate. How do I know? Well, now we had to contend with the opinions and the oppositions of men. We're in all we're in O's here today, okay? All the O's, okay? He had to contend now with, the with opinions and the oppositions of men, and especially those of the religious sect, okay? Yeah. There is nothing new under the sun, my Bible tells me in Ecclesiastes 1 9. He dealt with three types of people as he testified to the miracle that Jesus alone would do in his life. You testify to the miracle that Jesus has done in your life called saving, the saving of the soul. And you're going to get some opposition. You're going to get some opinions. I don't, I don't, I don't particularly like an opinion. I like absolute truth. This is where we find it. So I'm thankful that I can look to that and know that I have truth. Well, we find that he had to deal with some people. The miracle. Number four, the misuse of this man or the misuse of the members of the body of Christ. Right now, he was in the biggest battle. He was in the biggest battle. How do I know? Verses 11, 8, 8 to 12, his friends were the first ones. Said, well, is this not he? This is the guy that was born blind. Some said he is. 
Right? Some said, yeah, that's the guy. Some said, well, it's like him. But you know what? He said of himself, guess what? I am he. The Spirit of God witness, our, witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. I had a guy say something to me one day. I couldn't believe it. I was at work, sitting down when I worked at Tom's equipment. And he said to me, he said, you know, he said, it's kind of amazing. And I said, what's amazing? He said, people don't seem to get saved the way they used to. I said, did you ever think that maybe some of them aren't saved? Well, I tell you, he almost wanted to get up and slap me across the face. I'm going to tell you now, you're saved, you know. Jesus did something in your life. you got to spring your step. You know that you have passed from death unto life, and judgment has passed. And now you can serve. You're free, indeed. Free from what? Free from all the lies, free from all the deception, free from everything that's holding you down. Once you find out in the Bible what the truth is, and you can align, align your life to that as the Holy Spirit helps you. So this fellow here was going through quite a bit. Misuse, his friends, then his foes, right? The religious group in 13 to 17, verses 13 to 17. His foes, they were the religious group. And I'll tell you, religion and redemption never, ever, okay, it never, ever comes together. Because religion is a work of man for God. I'm trying to work my way to heaven. But redemption is a work of God for man. He said it's finished. You can't add anything to it. I like what the old boy used to say. There's a new religion and a done religion. You can do all you want to get to heaven and you'll miss the mark. It's already been done. Jesus Christ has done it for us. All you have to do is put faith in what he did. That definitely is the truth. And so his foes, the religious ones, and you know what? It's amazing what happened there because of the fact that finally they called in his parents because they didn't believe what had happened to this guy. That he actually was born blind and he received his sight. In verses 18 to 23, which we also read, but you know what? Verse 18 really puts a clinch on it. How do I know? Verse 18 says this, But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he was blind, or that he had been blind, and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. When they called the parents, things started reason. Really, you what know, what I say? Start going on the positive side for the testimony of Christ. You see, they could not in any way, shape, or form, okay, pass it, off, pass it off. In other words, it happened, and they knew. And so they were losing ground, and Christ was gaining ground. And, of course, this man's testimony was also gaining ground. So and he had a misuse because of the fact that his friends, his foes, and even his family, Yes, they testified to the fact that he was blind and that he had received his sight, but they said, hey, let him speak for himself. He's of age. I'm <laughs> not getting in on that one. Oh. Wonder why? Because it said that if anyone called Jesus the Christ, they would be what? Sent out of the synagogue. Think about it. And I'm going to tell you, it says right here, we read, there was a division because of him. And there's a division. Because you were, at one time, a child of darkness, if you're not saved. And when you become saved, you're a child of light. Darkness and light, that's it. Black and white. Truth and error. It's different. And we're to live differently out there in the world. We're in the world, but not of the world. I tell you, that's a great thing. It's a great thing. And you're not always accepted, that's for sure. Just like this fellow here. So the misuse of this fellow, he was misused by his friends, by his foes and his family. He suffered, number one, an onslaught. In other words, an attack by the religious sect of the day. An onslaught. Yeah. And not only that, also by society. By society. Verses 26 to 33 tells us that. 26 to 33 says this. Then said they to him again, What did he do to thee? How will be thy eyes? Here's this guy who is getting battered. Right? He answered them, I have told you already. How many times do I have to tell you, right? I have told you already, and you did not hear. Wherefore, would you hear him again? Would you hear this message again? No. Will you also be his disciples? And it says here that they reviled him and said, Thou art his disciple, but we are Moses' disciples. Well, you know what? It's amazing because some of Moses' disciples never grow up spiritually. Because it said Jesus already told them. 
if you believe Moses, you would believe me because he wrote of me. Let's think about it. Sometimes we have our own agenda, and it's to do what we want to do, not what Christ wants us to do. And to believe what we want to believe, and not believe what the Bible says. You know, this whole nature we have is entrenched in us more than we understand. It is indeed depraved. It is indeed wicked. There's no doubt about it. And only the Spirit of God can help us. And so he, he suffered an onslaught by his friends, his foes, and his family. No doubt about that in my society. You know, when I got saved, guess what happened? There was a guy that had lived, wicked, that lived a wicked life in gospel. Um, so I'm going to tell you who it was. That, by the way, that guy's saved now. But when I got saved, he couldn't believe it. He said, there's no way this guy gets saved. I know that Tom guy. And I know his life. There's no way. So what happened? One day I was up to Iron Dare's store. The old store. Iron Dare. You buy almost anything there, right? I was up there one day. And he had an old truck. And his carburetor wasn't working very well on this engine. That's when they built vehicles that I like. The ones I could work on, right? <laughs> anyway. He wanted me to get a carburetor kit for his truck because it wasn't running very well. Well, guess what? Probably nobody smoked any more than I did. I smoked two and a half packs of Green Death X4 day a day. Yeah, eight and a half years. I should not even be alive today, but God is good. So what happened? He said, look, uh, maybe you need to buy a carburetor kit for this. I said, yeah, I do. So he knew, he knew that I got saved and the cigarettes went out the window and filthy mouth went out the window, everything else went out the window. But he had a pack of cigarettes, that's all he had. So he, had, he opened them up. There's only about a couple taken of it. He knew, right? He knew. This is a big test. Test, right? And they're testing you every day as a Christian. Every day. And so he opened up that pack and he said, this is all I got to write on. The flap. So I lifted the I took it and I lifted the hood. He gave me a pen there also. I'm under there. I'm getting the number off this carburetor because I get the number off it to get the proper kit to rebuild it. Anyway, I brought it back. And I left it open on purpose. And when I gave it to him, I just kind of looked out the side there and I could see him. He was checking to see. I wonder if he took one or two in his pocket. No, he didn't. So that was a testimony unto him, right? A testimony unto him. And that guy is saved now. And he's another guy, something to say, the least likely guy ever to get saved. And God did work in his heart and his life. So people are watching us all the time. The misuse of the members of the body of Christ, or the misuse of this man. He suffered an onslaught, an attack by the, by the sect. In other words, the religious world of the day and society. And you know what? He was finally ostracized. He was sent out. This is the message. Would you hear it again if I told you? He said, no, you know, you're not going to hear this. He said, no, we're Moses' disciple. Right? Yeah. You're his disciple. Well, they made up their mind they weren't going to listen to it. You know what? You're going to get that up there. You won't take any amount of witnessing and handing out tracts and talking to people. You're going to find out that not everybody's going to accept the message you have. But it's the only message you can save. It's the only message that can satisfy. And it's the only message that can take you to that place of splendor for time and for eternity. We're on the winning team. It makes no difference what people say. That's why we have to stand up and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can't quit. It's eternal. So we stand up and we talk about Christ. Just as this man did. Just as this man did. You know what the problem was in verse 16? Is he divine or is he a deceiver? Because verse 16 tells us, very clearly, if I can turn back to it here, it says very clearly, therefore, said some of the Pharisees, this man, just a normal mere man, right, is not of God because he hear, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. Others said, how can this man, that is a sinner, he's not divine, he's just a sinner, how can he do such miracles? And it says there's a division because of him. Wow. He's divine, or is he not? He's God. There's no doubt about it. But he could not have done what he did. And so this fellow here went through an awful onslaught, an awful attack, an awful attack concerning his testimony. Your testimony is powerful. Never second guess what God's done in your life and what God can do in the life of someone else as you live for Jesus in a crooked and a perverse world. Well, the misuse. Number five, the message. The message. It was outstanding. It was outstanding.
Because you see, he was drilled on at least three times. And you can write it down. Verse, verse 10, verse 15, and verse 26. He was asked and asked and asked and re-asked many, many times. And you know what? Jesus is the only Savior. He called him a prophet. Right? He called him a prophet. He said that he was of God. They were saying everything else against it. But he was saying, no, he's a prophet. No, he's of God. Right? If he was not of God, he could not have done this miracle. Nobody can do this but God. And so, he had an outstanding testimony. Question, Tom, how's your testimony this morning? Why of Christ, how's our testimony this morning? Great question. I want to tell you something else. It was not just outstanding, it was ongoing. He didn't quit. He didn't quit. I didn't throw up and quit. This Christian life's too hard. It is too hard. But we can't live it anyway. Christ has to live it through you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live in the life. But Christ lived with me. And the life that I now live means that there's a change. That I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me. I don't understand how in the world he ever loved me. But he loved me. He gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. Write it down. It's the high eliminator. You're out of the way. And you need to show people Jesus. That's what it's all about. That's applicable to my life and your life if you're a Christian. So the message. Yeah, the message. He did not bend or belittle Christ. And his testimony was outstanding. It was ongoing. Although he was ostracized. Wow. He had a high view of Christ. How did you view this morning? Isaiah says, high view. Transcends everything that's in, the, that's in this world because he is God and he is God. And we serve him. Can you imagine? And you know what really baffles me? Is that God is sovereign. God is all powerful. God loves us with an everlasting love. And yet he still calls me his friend. This almighty, holy, righteous God can call me his friend. That's some kind of relationship we have with our friend. You think about it. That's how close he can get to you. That's how much he loves you and me. Let us remember that. Well, the message. It was ongoing. Sorry, it was outstanding. It was ongoing, even though he's ostracized. You see, the master and his blessing alone is what he wanted. That's exactly what he wanted. Well, verse 35, we're just going down here. We just go down. Verse 35. Oh, where am I here? It's 35. No. It's written down here. 35 to 28. Yeah. It says here, Jesus heard that they had cast him out. This is the blind man. They cast him out of the synagogue, right? And when he had found him, he said unto him, Dost thou believe on the Son of God? He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I might I believe on him. And Jesus said unto him, Thou hast both seen him, and it is he that talketh with thee. And he said, Lord, I believe. And he worshipped him. Notice he didn't know, he didn't know who Jesus was. He didn't see him. He was sent to the pool of Siloam without seeing him. Isn't that by faith? We walk by faith and not by sight. And so Jesus knew the testimony he had before everyone. He knows all things, right? He doesn't need to testify of any man because he knows all men. The Bible tells us in John. Oh, John. So we find here that he found him. The master found him. I like that. He saw him. Mm. And you know what? He saw him in a powerful way. He saw him in a personal way. He saw him in a preeminent way. Jesus is number one. Last point. The mark. The mark. He was blessed and honored by Christ. Had no standing testimony. It was ongoing. He was ostracized. But he was honored by the God of heaven. Jesus Christ, when he heard it, he found him. And of course, he came to him. That speaks to me of great, great fellowship and abiding. If we do what he wants us to do, he said he would come and abide. If we, look, if we, if, if we were true to his word. Well... Because this man, excuse me, because this blind man's testimony, because of, even though he was ostracized, right, he was outstanding and ongoing, and God honored him because Jesus heard and found him. His blessing alone was conferred upon this saint 
This soldier. Wow. Are you Moses' disciple this morning, or are you master, or are you the masters? What's going on? Are you living for yourself, or are you living for the Savior? Where are we really when it comes to that? This is your life. You say, you know, you don't even know me. You say, yeah, I do. I know. If you're a Christian, this applies to you. It applies to me as a Christian. I know quite a few things about salvation, and they're all the same to every person who is saved by the grace of God. Wow. You thought I forgot about the title, didn't you? This is your life. Or, I might even say this, is this your life? How do I measure up today? When I look at this fellow here in John chapter 9, am I really living for Jesus? Do people see Jesus in me? Am I serving him with all my heart, all my soul, all my heart, all my mind, bringing everything into captivity? Right? For the thought of Christ. Wow. Have you made your mark for the master? This man did. This man did. You say, well, that's pretty strong. That's pretty heavy. Yeah, it is. It's an indictment for each and every one of us. But you know what my Bible says to me? Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. If that's the case, that means I can do it in Christian life. I can do what God wants me to do in spite of whatever goes on in this world. And I can show people up there and back where it is that I serve Christ and they can see Jesus in me. So, this is your life. Or, is this your life as a Christian? And if you're not saved, Jesus said, I'm coming, they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. Right? We are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. How your life stand out? They're onlookers, that's the last O. A lot of O's in here. Onlookers. What do they see in me? They're everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. So, just keep that in mind. This is your life as a Christian. How well am I doing? How close am I to Jesus? He's done it all for me. That I might have all for all eternity. 33 years he gave. God, his life, he gave his entire life for us. What are we going to do? Am I going to give my life for him? Am I going to do what I want? Just this morning, this is your life. Praise his name. Just that far this morning. And I'm done. I just, uh, we're going to sing one song this morning. I'm going to sing one song this morning.